Welcome to the Sonya Buchanan Show, where we inspire one life, one smile at a time. Great day, everyone. It is time for the Sonya Buchanan Show, where we focus on one life, one smile at a time. Listen, we have a delightful show for you today, but first let me give you the title. It's called The Epidemic of Healthy Living. And we're going to dive into this discussion right after this commercial. So come back and join us. It's going to delight you, I promise. So we'll be right back. Oh my God, I got to tell you, I was having a moment and I decided to stare at the net. And that's when I came across this website called Comforting Promises, which is a great website, by the way. And get this. On the website was a featured book called The Journey by Sonia Buchanan that was recently published. So I immediately downloaded the ebook on Kindle because it talked about, you know, having faith for your life purpose. And let me tell you, the book is super great. I was so motivated to get back into the game pursuing my goals. And you got to get the book because it's worth the read. Welcome back to the Sonya Buchanan Show, where we focus on one life, one smile at a time. Again, our subject today is the epidemic of healthy living. Listen, you guys, I know right now we're still dealing with this epidemic of the COVID-19 virus, and it has increased and is spreading all over. Um, This is what the indication is. But you know, in the news, It would be so wonderful if they would share the numbers of the people who have been healed and recovered from COVID-19 just as much as they reveal how many people who have died of the COVID-19 virus. It will bring a balance so it won't seem like it's doomsday and that you cannot be healed from this virus when I know that you can. Uh, I've known people um, personally in my family who have been healed from uh, having COVID-19. And I've also known people that who have died of COVID-19. So there is a balance, you know, and there is still hope. There's always faith and hope in any circumstances in life. But I want to share with you about an experience that I had with a virus. And let me just say this, uh, because of the subject about healthy living, I'm not a person who gets sick. I have never had the flu before. I've never taken the flu shot. And I don't get colds during the winter time. Most, if I do get a cold, it's because of maybe I've been eating the wrong food and my system is low on certain vitamins and I would catch a cold uh, during the summertime, it's it's the weirdest thing. I would catch a cold. That's the worst thing is to catch a cold during the summertime when it's hot. Uh, but I'm usually pretty okay. I'll probably get a stomach ache because I ate too much grease from fried chicken or fried fish that I should have been eating in the first place. But uh, normally I don't get sick from viruses. But I want to share with you an experience that I had received a a particular virus that I didn't even know that I've never had it. And this is when I was 30 years old. I um, I received, I got sick with the chicken pox. And it's the weirdest thing. I'm 30 years old and I have chicken pox. And let me explain uh, what happened with that virus because, you know, I, I always try to identify and try to understand you know viruses and I was yesterday I was thinking about you know what is this virus how can it be transferred and you know is the virus alive when they get a shot or I mean how is how is it done and it brought back to my remembrance when I was 30 years old and I had just moved back home with my parents um two weeks prior and uh and this was the incident and and the reason why I'm sharing this because we have so many people who are very skeptical about receiving the vaccine and not receiving it. My podcast today is not about to tell you to receive it or not to receive it. Uh, that's, not my, that's not my place to make that decision for you. But I want to share with my experience of a virus that I had never 
experience until I was 30 is having the chicken pox. And how I got the chicken pox was that my niece at, the, at that time was six months old. And on a Friday morning, she received the chicken pox vaccination and other uh, vaccinations as a child would receive. And not knowing that she received shots that day, she came to the house and she stayed the weekend. She slept with me on that Friday. Now, I had no idea she received shots. And even if I did, I wouldn't have never known anything about how it could be transferred. Well, she slept with me that night. Well, the next morning on that Saturday, I went to work out and went to aerobics class and I started noticing red blisters maybe about one or two on my chest area. Now, I'm looking at this and not thinking anything of it, you know, and, um, and so I burst the blister, and it hurt when I burst it. And I said, wow, I mean, what is this? So the next day on Sunday, I went to another aerobics class, and I saw more blisters, red blisters. Now, I, I did not burst it because when I burst one on that, on that Saturday morning, it hurt. So I didn't want to feel that pain again. And I noticed I had maybe a couple more blisters on my chest and arm area. Never thinking anything wrong because the reason why I did not think anything wrong is when I, at that age, I worked out every single day. And sometimes I get dehydrated. And when I get dehydrated, my body begins to talk to me. And I began to get these white little clear blisters on my arm to give me an indication I need to drink more water because I will work out two and three hours at a time every single day. And so my body would get dehydrated, but I wasn't drinking enough water. So my body would just speak to it. And this is another reason I want to talk about this today, because your body will tell you, give you indications when there's something off. And, and I've heard many people say that I knew something was wrong with my body, that this was happening. You can just kind of know uh, I'm a little off. Um, my equilibrium is, is off balance. And you just kind of start doing your checks. And it's like, okay, what did I do this past week? And your body was just kind of tell you. But on that Sunday, I went to the aerobics class and I started noticing more red bumps. I said, hmm, okay. So I didn't think nothing else of it. On that Monday, I went to work and I, I worked in a call center as administrative assistant and they had a call center. So I, I would do a lot of work for the managers there and I'm walking around and, and, um, and I asked one of the ad mans, you know, about the red bumps, the red blisters. And she said, she said to me, girl, you got the chicken pox. And, and I looked at it and I said, I, I, that's, that's impossible for me to have the chicken pox, you know. She says, you got the chicken pox. I says, no. And uh, so I go on, you know, doing my day, just walking around the whole office. Now, I want you to know, I'm still, <laughs> I have this virus and it's, it's alive, you know, not knowing what this is. So I go out on the floor. We had a gentleman who had been out with his three boys with the chicken pox. And he had just returned that Monday. And I went to him and I asked him, I said, Jeff, I said, can you look at these bumps on my arms, these blisters on my arms? I said, is this, he says, yes, you have the chicken pox and you, you contagious right now, you know? And I said, no, get out. So I leave his desk from the call center area, go and call my mother and asked her, have I ever had the chicken pox? And she informed me at that present time, you have not had the chicken pox ever. And I said, well, the people here at the office just said I had the chicken pox. And she said, well, how did you get the chicken? This is how she said, how did you get the chicken pox? And then she laughed, you know. I said, what? She said, oh, your niece had the shots on Friday morning. I said, well, okay, what does that mean? And I said, I'll call you later. <laughs> So I'm sitting here thinking, what in the world has happened to me? I've just been exposed to a virus that was transferred from someone who had the vaccination. And um, so I later 
uh, was relieving. I'm still walking around the office because I'm not sure exactly what a virus is. Just like many of us don't know what a virus is. And we are doing things not out of uh, intentional, but out of ignorance, such as myself. I had no clue. Like I stated, I never got sick as a kid. Um, and I still don't get sick now. I had no idea that I needed to pack up my desk and leave the office immediately. I didn't know I was contagious. So the senior manager called in that day and that morning and I asked her, was she coming in? I said, are you coming into the office? Because people said that I had the chicken pox. She said, I wasn't coming in the office, but I'm coming in the office right now because I know you are not walking around in my call center with the chicken pox. You're contagious. And so she comes in and I'm sitting there at the front desk relieving the receptionist for her lunch. She walks right into the door, looks at me. She said, pack your stuff and get out of my office immediately. She immediately saw it because she had four kids, you know. She saw the red bumps on my chest area immediately when she came into that, that door. She said, pack your stuff and get out. Call, the, call my ad man and relieve you from this duty and get out of my office. And she said to me, as I was walking back to my desk, she was walking to me back to my desk to make sure that I get out of her office. She asked me, where have you been in my building? And I had to explain to her that I've been on the fourth floor helping the mail lady uh, distribute the mail because the mail lady on the mail floor, you guys, she had cancer. So I would always go up to help her deliver the bell because I didn't want her to get in trouble because she was, you know, very sick and it would take her t- a long time to do the mail. So I would go help her. Now I exposed this chicken pox with her and she has, she's sick. And so I went to, I told her, I said, I went to the fourth floor. I went to the third floor and I'm on this floor. She said, who have you been around? And I had to give her the list of every place that I've been, who I have talked to that morning she escorted me out that office, told me not to come back <laughs> until I had a doctor's excuse. I'm devastated because I'm sitting here with something that I am clueless about. I didn't know anything about being contagious, but I had just been everywhere in this building. Well, the reason why I want to talk about it is because the pandemic that we have, we have so many people giving us all this information about a pandemic and a virus that we are ignorant to know, but not ignorant to know. Um, and I want to talk about some of the things that I was experiencing, even having the chicken pox, but I was still contagious and could, uh, could spread this just like my niece did. She gave it to me. And so in, in terms, now I'm contagious. But I, after I left the office, I went immediately to the doctors. And the doctor, when I got to the, to the doctor's office, I had to inform them that I have the chicken pox. And they put me in another room. <laughs> they did not expose me into the waiting room because I could have uh, exposed chicken pox virus to the people that was in the waiting room. So I had to sit in a different room. Now I'm experiencing this and I'm still clueless, but I will tell you immediately when I got home, I had to understand what was happening to me because I was not sure. Like I stated, I'd never received any type of illness or sickness as a, as a child. Uh, but I did ask my mother you know, did I ever get vaccinated for the chicken pox? I don't remember her telling me that. Um, But one of the things that I want to talk about is uh, when we talk about the news, talking about this virus, it is very serious. People are really sick and they are they are probably scared and it also is resetting their mindset. And what I want to, I can't share about what they're doing, but what I decided to do is to make sure that I had the proper vegetables and the proper vitamins as I was getting ready to go into a place that I had no idea what I was about to experience. 
And when I finally come into the fullness of the chicken pox, the little red blisters no longer was little red blisters. My whole body was exposed to huge blisters and it was very painful. I had a temperature that was so high. In fact, I thought I was going to die. My mother was a little concerned that she would have had to take me to the emergency room because it was severe. So when I did a little research while I was there at home, found out that people receiving chicken pox at this age could die. The, the numbers are very high of death. So I'm sitting here in severe pain. I couldn't take a shower because the water was so painful on my body with all these blisters. I was exposed from head to toe, because like I stated, my knee slept right up onto me, and the place where she slept up onto me is where I severely got blisters. One of the great things about having a mother from old school, she knew what to do to keep me from being itchy and scratchy. She she fed me with Benadryl, where I, you know, they say that when you have chicken pox, you're very itchy and you can you can damage your skin, but she she kept giving me Benadryl. So I was never itchy. Uh, I took a lot of oatmeal baths and, um, that was pretty much, and it was, it was horrible for two consecutive weeks. I'm dealing with a sickness that was unto death, but, uh, because I was at home with my mother and, um, so she knew exactly what to do. But I had to do a little research and find out what in the world just happened to me because it was horrible. So I wanted to talk about the conditions and and people. It's not a comparison, the COVID-19 and chickenpox, but it's still a virus and it still can be contagious and it can still be exposed to one another. And we have to take precautions. Now, if my if if someone would have told me that my niece had the vaccination that morning I, and I knew and understood the danger of her sleeping with me, I don't think that that would have occurred. And that was the ignorance on my behalf and the non-communication of anyone explaining to me what this process is. And, uh, and like I stated, we, we learn from experience, we learn from situations, and we also have to learn by doing our own research and, and uh, researching. I know we have so many people talking about this is what you do, this is what you don't do. It's just too much. But what I found out is much easier if you take the time out to sit down and write out 10 questions that you personally may have in regards of any viruses, especially this COVID-19. And then you take those questions and you research your answers. And that will help eliminate some of the understanding and, and the noise because it's very, it's very difficult to bring understanding. You don't know who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth, who's giving uh, opinions based on their fears. But I found out that when you settle within yourself and ask yourself at least 10 questions, write the questions down and then start to research those answers, then it will be better to have an understanding of what we're dealing with when we come to this virus and how we can better uh, live a healthy living lifestyle until the world find out how they can bring a resolution to this exposure that we all are impacted by. Um, but I will say this, that we are all impacted. Even myself, I have not experienced the COVID-19 virus, but I still am just as responsible to take healthy living uh, precautions for my neighbors and wear my mask, making sure that I eat proper, proper, and also asking several questions, uh, 10 questions about this virus. But one of the things I did when I researched, I found out that vitamin D is one of vitamins that help uh, can fight against those bacteria. And I don't know if you like me, I do not drink milk. So my vitamin D does not come from milk. I would have to get vitamin D from vitamins or just being out in the sun. 
and sun has a lot of vitamin D. So if you guys, this is the summertime, we're still having beautiful um, sunlight. Make sure you spend a lot of time outside in the sun. Go walk around the yard because the vitamin D is a very strong vitamin to help with all types of viruses. I don't know if you knew that, but I researched it and I found that out. Uh, and I ask, um, I ask questions, you know how you do the ask questions online, and then it gives you this answer. And those are some of the vitamins that, uh, vitamin D is a vitamin that helps fight a lot of different bacteria and, and viruses. Now, don't take, don't take my word for it. You can listen to it and then do your own research to bring comfort to your heart and, um, But you want to protect yourself. You want to protect your family. You want to constantly think of healthy living. And it's very important um, that we are really focusing on health. I work out every day, but if I can just just do a couple more things of understanding how to um, eat properly for my diet at this age, it will benefit me more just like for everyone in the world because every different age group, your body responds to food differently. Um, But anyway, that's all I want to talk about today is to share with you about an experience that I had with a virus and also express healthy living for this particular time that we're in and also be cautious, be aware, uh, watch out for your neighbor. I try to keep, um, I try, I do try to keep mask, extra mask in my car and also the grocery store that I go to, they have masks they give to people who are entering into their store if I forget. So one of the things I am, you know, I give kudos to that grocery store because they do keep uh, masks they give to their customers just in case that they forget it in the car. But listen, you guys, I want you to be safe. I want you to make sure you're eating proper vegetables and eating the right foods for your body, whatever that is. Um, But I want you to be safe. I want you to be cautious and ask those questions so you can get the answers. Then you can have a better understanding of what we're dealing with in our atmosphere today. But listen, this is the end of our podcast, and I want to thank you for joining us. And this is your girl, Sonya Buchanan, with the Sonya Buchanan Show, where we focus on one life, one smile at a time. Until next week, you guys have a great rest of the week. Be safe, be sound, be love, be joy. Have a good day, you guys. Bye. Thank you for joining our podcast today. The podcast was produced and edited by Sonia Buchanan. For more information about the host, you can go to sonbuchanan.com. For information about Comfort and Promises broadcast community, you can go to comfortandpromises.com. Thank you for listening to our broadcast, The Sonia Buchanan Show, where we focus on one life, one smile at a time. Until next time, bye you guys. Thank you for listening to our broadcast, The Sonya Buchanan Show, where we focus on one life, one smile at a time. Until next time, bye you guys.